but are you at all concerned about the fact that one of the people that we were, were with in Mexico who was just totally hostile to any notions is now the person who's the who's President Trump's advisor on this whole subject? Am I concerned about it? <laughs> not not any more than I'm concerned about anything else going on in Washington okay. today. Um, I think the important thing is that, look what just happened in Nebraska with the floods. Yeah, I think you talk to farmers in Nebraska, you talk to farmers in Iowa, Yeah, they actually get it. Yeah, well, and, you know, and, and and I think that the tide, well, the tide is rising. But I think I think the important point is that, um, I think we're ready for a big political transformation. And I think where where this has to come is it has to become a post partisan issue. Yeah. Um, a well, few years ago, I spent some time with uh, Representative Eric Cantor. Do you yeah, remember Eric Cantor? Yeah, I remember Eric Cantor. He was the House Majority Leader. Yeah. And he was very conservative. He. Mm at least in the press, they portrayed him as, as you know, anytime John Boehner wanted to make a compromise, Eric Cantor would pull him back to the right. Mm -hmm. And I spoke to Eric Cantor in his office about climate change. He asked me to come in and I was a little surprised because I was on President Obama's yeah. science council. Yeah. And um, so like, why are you talking yeah. to me? Yeah. And he said, I, I, we talked about climate change. He chastised me a little for yeah. some comments I made about coal. And, but then he, he said he liked how I talked about the problem and about technology. Mm -hmm. And he wanted me to help his staff design a strategy for conservative Republicans that would be acting on climate change, not through denial. Mm -hmm. And I was a little surprised. I said, why are you doing this? And he said, number one, we've purged all knowledge from our party. So we don't actually have anybody to advise us on yeah. that. And number two, Republicans under 35 think we're crazy. Yeah. The, and the, he saw the writing on the wall that basically the Republican Party needs to switch. Yeah. No, this is a really important point. Uh, the, I, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, one can look around and I think people are ready for change. But now remember, were, he got, he got, he lost his primary lo three weeks he lo later. He lost it. I know exactly. <laughs> so I never got to do this work. And let me say, and I was a little concerned when you talk about this, interestingly, when I was um, chair of the board of the Bolton Atomic Scientists, we, one of the things we did, we had an event in Congress where we talked about climate change and other existential risks. And I was, I was saddened at the time that it was open to all staffers. And, the, and, all, and I was hoping, and what surprised me was that only the Democratic staffers came to that. And I, I, thought, I was really surprised because I thought it would be a, a bipartisan issue of just learning about the science. And I was, uh, and, and, and by the way, I should, since we should make full disclaimers, you were not only on Obama's uh, science council for the for while he was president. I was on one of, on his advisory panel when he was running. Into so we all have we have our yeah uh, our connections. No, but, but but here's the interesting thing. Um, I think that the path forward in this country, the real sea change, will happen when both parties are competing for better solutions. Yeah, but I also think it'll happen within its generational. I think you hit the point that the Republicans under 35, I think that what is clearly happened, and it's good, and in spite of the incredible amount of money being spent to obfuscate the issue, that generationally we're beginning to see, and, and you know, young people be concerned about many things. And anytime young people are concerned about many things, I think it's a great thing.